Good morning. Thank you very much for allowing me to tell you about the progress regarding the association between feed efficiency and methane emissions, performance and health in merino sheep. This work is part of three closely related projects such as Smarter, Grass to Gas, and a Uruguayan India project called Rumia. So to begin, we will consider two initial questions. The first one is what type of sheep are we looking for? And the second one is why it's important to know the association between efficiency, emissions, performance, like uh, good production, good quality, and health. Here's really many of you know the Michelangelo Benerotti's famous answer to the question, how did you create this perfect David? The answer was, the sculpture is already complete within the marble block before I start my work. It is already there, I just have to chisel away the superfluous material. So in the picture, you can see a famous rock, a famous stone in Uruguay, that is the, called the stone ram. We, the breeders, together with the researchers, believe that we have a great genetic material in our flock, but we we'll, but we'll still must keep working on some trait. Breeders know that it's a never-ending task. So, answering the initial question, we are looking for the ship of the future. For that, we need to know that is the relationship between the traits that are most selected today, such as this related with wool production and quality, reproduction and growth and body weight. We have another important trait like uh, uh, maternal ability, easy care, and the, all those data that are related with the um, with hell like uh, parasite resistance or parasite resilience and uh, related with food root blower. And then additionally, the last year we have additional trade like a uh, residual feed intake or feed intake record and record of emission. So material and method. We work with this lamp, 278 merino lamps, male and female lamp. Uh, lamps were allotted to one or this, this three trials according to the age of the lamp, um, body weight, and the size of the lamp. And the lamp came from 12 different sires. Additional, in each test, animals were allocated to one of five automatic feeding system in accordance with the body weight and the size of the land. So during this uh, 56 day test, land were feed at Levitun with Lucerne high lash with 22% of crude protein and the facilities allowed to measure automatically the feed intake and land that are also working automatically every time they go to drink water. In this way, we can obtain between three to five daily weight record per animal. Here you can see the facilities to measure the individual feed intake, the automatic body weight, weight when the animals uh, drink water, and the pack chamber to record emission. Let me show a brief video of our facilities in La Magnolia unit in near the Tacuarembó city. Here you have the, the facility for feeding tech record. 
Have you seen this outdoor? Here is the automatic feed intake record. And here is the water sources and the automatic body weight measure. So the dry mate, main intake was computed as the average of the individual daily intake. The average daily gain was calculated by regression using the weight for each period. And finally, the residual feed intake is the residual resulting uh, from this model. Then we selected the two uh, highest feed intake and the lowest feed intake uh, of this generation. This one, uh, here you can see the number of the less efficient animal and the more efficient animal. We work with these two group, the more efficient and the less efficient animal. So we we'll analyze the difference between the residual feed intake stream from different groups of trade. The main trade are intake trade, like feed intake per day, residual feed intake, and the number of visits to the feeder and the number of daily meal. The, the number of visits is each time the the land is the feeder, and the number of the daily meat is the time when the lamb effective uh, takes some, some, some feed. The other group of trade are the emission trade, the methane emission, yield, and intensity, the CO2 emission, and the oxygen emission consumption. So for the grow trade, we have the yield in body weight, and to ultrasound measure the fat depth and the river area. And for grid production and quality, we have the clean fleece weight, fiber diameter, step length, a special indicator that is usually used in, in grid production. This is the grid production potential, that is a ratio between clean fleece weight and body weight. All these traits I measure when the the first sharing that is about one year or length. So, and the last group of traits are the health traits that indicate parasite resistance, like FAMACHA uh, trait, and the fecal account, the post winning fecal account, you have usually to measure after um, winning. So, this is the, usually the, the model to. To analyze this data, you have the, the special fixed effect of the residual feed intake group, and the other fixed effect like dam age, beer type, contemporary group, the trial, pen, and that this effect includes the sex of the animal and the age of the measure. Results and discussion. So in this graph, you can show the different trajectory of the average body weight uh, in the different trade, in the one, two, and three. You can observe a bigger variation in the third trade because there was only female with a bigger difference between pens of body weight. And so on the difference between the receiver feed intake group the less efficient group has higher receiver feed intake ability and higher drain mate intake and higher number of visits and number of visits with effective meal. In this slide, we can see the main result from, from the group of emission trade as you can see, less efficient animal had a higher methane and carbon dioxide emission, uh, had a higher methane intensity, but a lower methane yield and a higher uh, oxygen consumption. 
So this is the last results of fly. In this case of wool production, it was observed that the less efficient animal produce more wool and have a greater wool production potential. This is very interesting and we will continue studying it because it is difficult to conceal the gold production during the efficiency test. On the other hand, the wool quality was not affected and in addition, no effect was observed in the growth and ultrasound measure of the lamb or in the trait related to resistance or resilience to parasites. So the main conclusion was that uh, decreasing feed intake would have negative consequences on animal performance and health by improving residual feed intake provides an opportunity, uh, an opportunity to increase profitability and grazing ship system and with the less emission. This favorable result must be balanced with a potential reduction on flint's weight and or in wool production potential in a fine gold production system that are the more common in, in Australian merino breed in Uruguay. So we need more research in this trade because for, for our condition, the, the gold production is very important and it's very difficult to, to, to measure this gold production in the, in, during the 42 or 45 days of the, the test. Finally, I want to thank the work team of the different projects and thank you for your attention. I will also welcome comments and questions.